Chicago segments on Chicago Tonight are generously supported by the Smart Family Foundation. This Saturday marks 35 years since the first broadcast of Those Were the Days, Chuck Shaden's radio show that features classic programs from the golden age of radio. Chuck's program has now been on the air much longer than the so-called golden age, which was about from 1935 to 1955. Here's a sample of one of the shows from that era, a program familiar to listeners of Those Were the Days, The Jack Benny Show. Oh, hello, Rochester. What are you doing? <laughs> Just cutting your hair, boss. Put it on. Let's see how it looks. They're still funny. <laughs> Stepping out of his hall closet now to be with us tonight, the host of Those Were the Days, Saturdays on 90.9 FM and worldwide on the internet, as he is fond of saying, Chuck Shaden. Good to see you, Chuck. Thanks, Bob. Happy to be here. And uh, I enjoyed Jack Benny month in February, Thank as you. I have for many, many years. I, I think I go back almost uh, all 35. It's, it's an amazing accomplishment. Well, it just seems like yesterday. And uh, you know what a wonderful day yesterday was? It was, it, you know, it just builds. It just seems to build. You don't, you don't start something like that. You know, you don't start a broadcast uh, with the thought that, oh, I'm going to be here for 15 years or 20 well, you're years. You're just trying to get can, through one. I can hope I can be here tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How are you going to mark the uh, anniversary? Well, we've got a special program planned. It's a live show. We're doing a, a remote broadcast uh, from the LaSalle Bank Theater on West Irving Park Road in Chicago. And uh, we're going to do a reenactment of a Your Hit Parade broadcast with the Steve Cooper Orchestra. We have a big band. We're going to recreate a um, Coon Sanders Nighthawk program from 1929 with the West End Jazz Band. And then we are going to do a salute to the big bands, the old remote broadcast from the high up top of the Aragon Ballroom, so stuff nice. like that. And, and a few other things. And nobody can get in now because it's sold, sold out. out. It's a benefit it? for WDCB, and we were sold out uh, before Jack Benny month was over, I think. Well, good for you. Yeah. How did this all start? What was the genesis of this for you? I was a collector. And I, I got tired of uh, having people over and listen in my living room on a Saturday night to, to the radio shows. I didn't get tired of it, but you can't, you, you, you don't listen to radio as a group. You listen to radio individually. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, gee, if I could get these shows on the air someplace. And I found a small station in Evanston, WLTD. And there we started on the 2nd of May of 1970. It was a beautiful sunny day. Cubs were playing. <laughs> <laughs> Who was going to listen to old-time radio on a thousand-watt daytimer from Evanston? I'm, you know, I've said it before. My mother and father and my wife. You know, at least I was sure about my mother and father. <laughs> <laughs> and there's young and we Chuck started. right there at the uh, microphone. Oh. <laughs> and did you have immediate reaction? Uh, not instantly. Uh, I kept asking people, what would you like to hear? And no one knew what they wanted to hear. No one called in. Nobody said anything. I thought, oh, this is going to die a quick death. Nobody wants to hear and then one day I said, look, I'll send you a program guide for the next six weeks of our programming if you send me a box top, <laughs> any box top. 600 box tops came in in a week, and we were off and running. What a great, uh, yeah. appropriate way to do it. And here's the Nostalgia Digest mm -hmm. today, right. the program guide that has articles. And I'm always fascinated by the letters that you mm -hmm. get, and now you get emails. Right. And since the program has been on the Internet, what kind of comments have you gotten and where have they come from? Well, they've come from all over. I've had uh, email from Japan, from Germany, Australia, uh, uh, China, uh, everywhere, Yugoslavia. People have written in or emailed me and said, here, we're listening and we enjoy it. And they, I get the biggest kick out of it because we're on from 1 until 5 Saturday afternoons. And they say they listen, you know, I'm listening in England now from 6 to, uh, to 10 at night sure. or whatever. And I get a kick out of that. And now we also offer streaming audio on my own website. And that's on demand 24 hours a day, seven days a week for a week after each broadcast. So now people can listen on Tuesday morning if they want or Wednesday afternoon or Thursday at midnight or whatever. And it's kind of funny, the marriage of the new technology with the uh, old days of radio. That's what it? I really like about it. I really like, and we have tried to bring the old times to the new times. And not only technically but uh, emotionally. So we have found an awful lot of young people, younger people who've never heard these radio programs when they were first broadcast, and now they say, I never realized this was 
what was on radio in mm -hmm. those days. And yeah. there I find now three generations of people listening to the program yeah. since uh, we started 35 years ago. I've Amazing. actually turned on a, uh, the 12-year-old boy you know, mm -hmm. who lives in our house oh, yeah. uh, to the shows. Good. And he's an avid reader, and he mm -hmm. loves movies, yeah. and he finds... Uh, these stories compelling and uh, unlike a lot of kids I guess who grew up with television and just can't sort of imagine things they have to be seeing something he, mm -hmm. he has a, mm -hmm. he does it pretty well and well, he really gets into it. Radio listening to this kind of stuff is an audience participation sport you're not a spectator you're a participant because you have to costume the actors and decorate the sets and do all of that sort of thing it's beautiful. Uh, by the way correction he's 13. 13. Oh. Let me get <laughs> let me get in another uh, audio clip. Oh, good. Fibber McGee and Molly. This originated mm -hmm. at NBC Chicago, the Merchandise they Mart. They started they started in Chicago at WMAQ in the Merchandise Mart, right? Well, let's listen and then I want to ask you about the staying power of these shows. Here's okay. Fibber McGee and Molly in a famous sound. Well, nine o'clock is twelve, Augie. I appreciate this a lot. Good. I'll go home right now and start setting it up. I'll just duck out the side door here if you don't. No, 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 no that's not the side. That's the hall. No, no, no. And the closet noise, I guess, was uh, <laughs> supplied by uh, uh, some guy turning uh, some uh, barrel of junk. No, no, he had, his, he had stairs. Oh. And he, he put the, uh, the, all the junk on a stairs, a step <laughs> effect, uh -huh. and he'd start pulling junk from the bottom step and the next up, and then it would all cascade down on one another, and that was, that was created the crash. That was the actual fibber crash, right? So he really did uh, make, make things fall. Oh, yeah. And it was wonderful to listen to it at home, but even more fun to see it in the studio sure. audience. Oh, yeah. And what is it about these shows uh, that uh, has now turned on new generations? Well, it's the quality of the programming. It's the quality of the story and the, the ability of the entertainers and the writers to tell that story. It's long-lasting. If it was good back in 1942, it's still good today. And because you don't, you costume the actors yourself, you don't see dated clothing, you don't see old 1942 automobiles when you hear <laughs> driving down a way. You hear the, you, you see what you want to see. Yeah. And so it, it's not dated. There are a few jokes, a few comedy things here and there, Fred Allen comes to mind immediately, that are dated because they're topical. But... Uh, there's a rhythm to the way they would tell those things. Bob Hope, too. He was very topical. Mm -hmm. But Hope would tell... When I was a kid, you know, I was 10 years old listening to Bob Hope, and I don't know what the heck he's talking about. He's at an army camp someplace, and he's talking about uh, Gertie's place down the corner. You don't know what that is. Mm -hmm. And he, he just tells the story with such a rhythm that you have to laugh at it when the GI audience is laughing mm -hmm. because it's contagious. It didn't make any difference if you didn't know what it was. But it was fun, and you had a good time. And uh, I love it when you play uh, old news broadcasts. Mm -hmm. And I was listening a few weeks ago when you were playing the coverage uh, that Arthur Godfrey anchored oh, yeah. of the death mm -hmm. of FDR. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. fascinating history. Give me one very quick Jack Benny story. You got to interview him when he played Mill Run. By the way, I saw mm -hmm. that show. Oh, good. You went backstage, chatted with him. Right. Uh, give me a, a nugget about what he was really like off the air. He was just as I expected him to be off the air. He was very relaxed. He was very friendly. He, he, he must have told some of those stories many times, but he told it to me like he was telling it for the first time. And he, you know, I'm a guy doing a radio show on a little station in Evanston, Illinois. And Jack Benny has to be the biggest radio star of all time. And yet he said, I've talked with him, sure. Yeah, and I amazing. was impressed. I was Started in May, and in September of that same year, I'm across the table from Jack Benny. I was almost as pressed as I am now. No, now you're, <laughs> now you're delirious from uh, the, the vinyl of all those old discs. 35 years. Thanks, always Bob. Saturday at 1 o'clock you started, too. That's all right. those years on different stations. In the stations. same time slot, yeah. And, and by the way, May 2nd, I think that's a good date to start uh, a new radio format, mm -hmm. because I believe WLS started the rock and roll programming May 2nd of 1960. And that's the date in 1932 that Jack Benny went on the air. May the something second. about that date. That's right. Yeah. It's a good date. We'll start the next uh, new program on Channel 11 on May 2nd. That's a good idea. <laughs> Thanks, Chuck. All <laughs> Thank the best you. to you. Thanks, Bob. And we shall return here in just a second.